felt tonight just how bad it, it, it really is, but the positivity thing, which people like to hear, they like to think, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, or we will get through this. I mean, matter of fact, one of the headlines today, um, uh, this, this sort of rhetoric, together we can ride out the storm. Now, that's despite uh, massive energy bills, massive cost of living crisis. What did you take away from what you heard? So I think I'm, her speech... One, the, there were two significant things, I think, about her speech yesterday, apart from how short it was. The first of which was no mention of levelling up. You know, the, the, the goals that she outlined were perfectly good, controlling energy bills, yeah. getting, getting the NHS... But the people she's out. supposed to retain in the red wall areas... But precisely. It's not a hard word to say yeah. if, you, if you're name-checking things. And, you know, especially in a morning when the Yorkshire Post ran a big front page about how they were watching and listening for that. The fact, I think the fact she can't bring herself to say it is quite interesting. But also, obviously, there's no detail. You know, the, the Tories have been trying to fix the NHS forever. She's not said how she's trying to, how she's going to fix the NHS. Is that fair? She's not even been 24 hours in the post no, yet. No, 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 no. I wasn't. I'm not, that wasn't a criticism of the speech. But I think that what's going to be significant today at PMQs is that she can't do the same thing because what mm. Starmer will do is he will go at her on the detail on any one of these issues, and she needs to have something. She can't have a fully worked out proposal. But for example, she said yesterday she's going to put spades in the ground to sort of solve the energy crisis. Does that mean she's going to force through onshore wind? Does, are Tory MPs going to let her do that? Does that mean she's going to open fracking wells? Or is anyone going to let her do that? Like, like these phrases, they have to mean something. She will have some yeah. kind of plan in place. Build nuclear power stations. But that takes years, which yeah. is good, but it takes yeah. years. It's not yeah. going to help them. So, so she, has, she has obviously hasn't worked out every detail, and that's fine, but she will need a lot more detail than she mm -hmm. offered us yesterday, and PMQs will be the first test of that, I think. But, uh, listen, I think, like you, I do, I sit and say, you know, give me the detail, what do you mean by that? But so many people don't want the detail. So many people just want to hear someone say, it's going to be OK. From that point of view, do you believe her? No. <laughs> uh, I, I ultimately, I, I wish her the best. You know, we, we all want a government to get us through these challenges, I think, whether you're Labour or the Tory. They are the government in power at the minute, and we want them to get through it. But a lot of these problems have been a very long time coming. And it's diff maybe this will be what shakes people out of their complacency. But, you know, we're about to hose a vast sum of money propping up energy companies, basically, when if we'd invested that money over the past 10 or 20 years in our energy infrastructure, we wouldn't be in this position. And I think we're going to have that time and time again. Henry, could you explain to me, could you explain to our audience uh, what exactly you mean by propping up energy companies? Because for the life of me, I do not understand why they are such sacred beasts, why the government seems to, um, uh, what's the word, subsidise them. And what we're getting out of it, are we getting energy security out of it? Are we getting cheaper energy out of it? I don't think we're getting much out of it, and they're getting a lot of excessive profit. Well, in this case, I mean, for most of the suppliers, in fairness, aren't getting excessive profit. It's the producers yes, who are yeah. absolutely raking it in. In this case, what the government is doing is, free is freezing our energy bills, which is good in the short term because otherwise they would become unpayable. Well, we're, we're paying but for we're, that. But precisely, but we're going to end up paying yeah. that back. Now, in my case, I, I'm feeling slightly aggrieved because... I have a bills inclusive contract, so actually I'm going to be paying for 10 or 20 years for money that was lent to my landlord, um, which is extremely aggravating. But the reason, the re basically, what Liz Truss has done is that she, she ruled out handouts to families, and there are some good reasons for that, in that it can be quite difficult to set those processes yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And so instead, she's frozen bills, and she's the intervention, targeting the state intervention at the energy companies, um, which, which is a way of doing it, which means if you want to help everybody rather than just people on the state pension or benefits, it is a way of doing it. But it means that there is effectively a huge transfer of taxpayers' cash to these companies in order to freeze, the, in order to freeze bills. Mm. Together, we can ride out the storm, can we? If we take really bold action... I'm just not entirely... Basically, the problem is that the, the government needs to nail the energy crisis, but nailing the energy crisis just means that they win the ability to get a hearing on inflation, on public sector pay disputes and the attendance strikes, uh, on Northern Ireland. You know, there's a huge number of challenges mm -hmm. facing this government. The energy crisis just wins them a he the, the chance to solve the others. What, what is your view, as a Conservative, what is your view on the fact that it is a loyalist uh, cabinet... Um, and that there was, there was no attempt to bring the, the Rishi Sunak camp on board. I think it's a slightly strange decision, given, that, given the state of the polling, there's almost certainly not going to be an early election. Because if they're, in normal circumstances, somebody like Liz Truss would want an early election in order to win their own mandate, and it would make sense to elect a cabinet, to select a cabinet of loyalists who, who make you strong in the mm -hmm. short term, 
then you have an early election to win your own mandate. Given that the Tories are 15 points behind in the polls, we're not going to have an early election. And so therefore, what she's done is in the very short term, she has a cabinet that's going to be singing from her hymn sheet. But in the medium to long term, there are going to be a lot of people who are resentful about being passed over or resentful for being kicked out of office uh, in, on top of her ideological enemies. And the moment things start going wrong for her, she's going to have a lot of trouble on the back benches.